All right, so this video is about Tesla. I'm going to give my thoughts on why I think this is going to be the bottom and why I think next week might be by the news event. And I'm going to go ahead and have the conviction to also increase my position next week. So on the daily, we have this gap fill that we just broke down to, right? And what I've been warning is if we start giving up this level, right, this 146 area, we are going to be trading over 95% of all shares traded since November 2020, right? So I don't think we can spend very much time under this, okay? If we start pulling away and giving up this level, then I think we're going sub $100, okay? Because if we give up this level, everyone for the last four years is underwater, right? So let me show you some technicals on why I think this could be the bottom. All right, so we have this descending support, and you know it can widen, so I'm going to say it's going to widen, okay? This week, we filled the gap. We have a little bit of a bottom wick, but on the daily, what I want to show is, obviously, we've been having bearish divergences, right? And we still do. But the most important thing that I want to, to point out here is the ADL line, right? If you look at this ADL line, it has been supported one, two, three, four times. And now today's the fifth, right? And something I always express is, you know, there's hundreds of technicals in the market. And what we want to do is we want to identify a technical that has proven itself and use it till it disproves itself, right? Makes sense, right? So if we look at this, you can see that every time Tesla has hit this ascending support, it has found the bottom for this rally, which was, you know, 83%. For this rally, which was 38%. For this rally, which was 17%. For this rally, which was 15.5%, right? So every time it's hit this ascending support, we rally, right? So we have to take that in consideration. It's proven itself and we need to respect that, right? And where to be close today? Be closed on this ascending support line. So what this tells me is Monday, if we gap down, Monday has to close higher than it opens. Tuesday, let's say the earnings are, are bad Tuesday, and Wednesday, it gaps down again. We, once again, have to close higher than we open. If this at any point breaks, then that invalidates this as a support line. But it's worked for the last four times. So until this gets disproven, we have to trust this, right? And if this were, was to be broken, then I would think that one of these double bottoms would be supported. But let's just focus on this. What we've also been doing is we've been wedging, right? Massive accumulation wedge. Even though price has been making lower lows, accumulation is making higher highs, right? So on the ADL line, we have sending support. That's been respected. That's proven to, sh to show rallies. We've filled this gap, right? The other thing that I want to point out is this purple line, 325, weekly moving average, has proven itself to be the ultimate trend since $16, right? It's was the support here, right? It was the support here. If we start pulling away and we give up this level, right, that would confirm to me to believe that Tesla is going sub $100. If you have both of these technicals of confluence and they both break, then that tells me Tesla is going to go sub 100. But there's a bullish thesis here, right? There's a bullish thesis here. This has proven itself. We're at the support level. Where are we at? We're at the 325, right? That is supportish, right? Um, we filled the gap. We're oversold. Accumulation is all time high. Something else that I want to point out is this, right? Something that I noticed while looking at NVIDIA and Tesla. And I think I said in this post is interesting comparison was Tesla hedged to NVIDIA, right? If you look at the beginning of every powerful NVIDIA rally, it marked the top of Tesla's 
of price action, which then causes a downturn, right? So it's very possible that Tesla was a hidden hedge to NVIDIA's AI theme, right? There can only be one, so to speak, right? And now what do we have? We have NVIDIA falling off a cliff. The price action was 821 there. It's no longer 821. What is it? It's 762, a 10% uh, down day, right? And I assume we're going to make it down a little bit lower, probably find support there, but you know, it's not looking too good for NVIDIA. And all of this happens right when we're at this apex. I don't think that is a coincidence. I think next week the NVIDIA money is going to go into Tesla, right? Now, Tesla is going to be the hedge to NVIDIA. I think it's very possible. You know, there's so many catalysts coming up with Tesla. The RoboTaxi, right? FSD, $99 a month. FSD being delivered to all or being offered to all uh, car companies. Grok version 1.5 is going to be better than ChatGPT4, which will be in the vehicles and also in the brain. It'll be the brain of the, the robots, right? And all of these catalysts are coming up in the next six months. Interest rates will be cut this year, right? The profit margins have been being compressed because of high interest rates. That will be resolved in the short term, maybe medium term. But all of these catalysts are coming up, and we have the most advanced company doing the most Right? Name another company that's doing more currently. There's not one, right? Now let's get back to technicals. Let's look at some other stuff, right? I always say that between the 100 and 200 is always a good time to buy, right? Let's let's just do some mapping here. Let's see if the math maps. Let's just get weird. Let's go and measure the top of the bottom of this candle from the 100-day moving average and measure the bottom of that candle. 38%, right? Let's measure the top of this one, and let's measure down to 38%. $138. I think Tesla's going to go to $138 next week, and that's going to be the bottom. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Let's measure it from the bottom to the bottom of the wick, 11.4%. Let's try this. 11.4%. $138. This is going to be a measured move, right? Where it's going to exactly, it could exactly fall on $138, right? That's crazy. Let's, let's see if there's anything else. Let's look at the Fibs extension and see if... Oh, isn't that interesting? Fibs extension falls right here, right? It's a measured move. Descending support. Kind of interesting, right? So what if Tesla falls to 138 and then it reclaims the 325, right? And it's a complete buy the news event. And then they, they jump, drop it down to 138, they get some volatility and they snap it back up and they just buy all those shares and they shake people out. And I think it's possible. I really do. Um, let's look at, I also think that Apple is possibly bought, right? Um, you can see that historically, since 2009, buying between the 200 or the 100, which is the blue line, and the 200, has always been a time to buy during this, this cycle, right? Every time you bought in between these two levels, it was the bottom of the next cycle, right? So here we go. We bought it, and now we broke back above, and now I think this is a back test because it's very common to go down, break above, and back test the 100. See that? Break above, back test 100. Break above, back test 100. Break above, back test 100. Like it's very common for this to happen, right? So what do we have here? Same thing. We have a monthly demand zone here. We're falling into the every time we've ever it's ever been bought in this area has been the bottom of the next cycle, right? You cannot ignore that. You cannot. How's the ADL line looking, right? Wouldn't it be quite interesting to double bottom off this pivot low and to this ascending support? Look at that ascending support band. How long has this uptrend of accumulation been? Since June of 2021. 
every time it's hit into this band, it's been a bottom. That's actually a uh, proof. Check that for proof. Boom, bottom, right? Bottom. Now, obviously, that was lower lows during the accumulation phase, but still, there was a rally there, right? There's still a rally of 13% from there. What about this one? This one, I think, was 50%, 57%. Every time we've hit it, it's marked a rally. I think it's possible. You know, Apple lags Tesla. But I think Tesla leads this one, right? I really do. And But I think Apple and Tesla become the leaders again once the AI hype is over. Let's look at something else. Let's look at the Tesla plus Apple chart. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. What's happening here? I didn't even see that, to be honest. That's hilarious. Look at this. This is sending support it's from August 2019. When it hit here, what did this mark? A massive rally. This was the, the Tesla and Apple chart combined. All right, what's happening here? Well, I'll be fucking damned. Look at that. You know, anytime you have an indicator that proves itself, you use it till it disproves itself. So you mean to tell me that this is sending support, which has marked the bottom of here, is also happening during the same time of Apple's confluence, the same time as all of Tesla's confluence? I don't think that's a coincidence. I think they're about to leave the next rally, right? Let's look at some other stuff. Let's look. I think this is ABC wave, right? For massive wave two. Let's look at the pivot extension there. From this high to this pivot low to this pivot high, I'll be fucking damned. Look at that. What is this? This is a monthly demand zone. This is a monthly. Oh, I can't do that. Anyways, the purple is a monthly demand zone right here. All right. Let's see if there's any type of. Let's do a measure move here, right? Let's just for the fuck of it. Um, so this was the bottom. Away from, the pull away from the 325 was about 19%, 18%. Let's see what this would be. Look at that. Just a hair lower. I don't know, guys. The math is mathing. The math is mathing. You mean to tell me we hit the bottom of this monthly demand zone and then skyrocket from here? I think it's probable. I think it's possible, right? So, you know, it's like, what's this com combined value? It's currently 312-ish. So maybe we drop down to 307. Maybe Tesla goes down to 138, and that marks the bottom. What would this area also be? The, monthly, the bottom of the monthly demand zone? The FIBS retracement? So we go, this is from pivot low, all-time low to all-time high. We hit the 61, we break back above, and now we back test the 50% FIBS retracement. I think it's probable. We're in an oversold condition, right? I think Tesla and Apple's bottomed. So with that being said, I have so much confluence here that it's like, it's a very minimal risk, and risk right? The line in the sand. Like, is this the bottom of Tesla where it goes to $700 in the next three years, right? Or, you know, does all this break and I lose 10%? <laughs> you know, is 10% worth sniping the bottom of Tesla, especially with options contracts? All right, let's look at the option and contracts of what I'm looking at. So if I do January 2026, current price is 140-ish, uh, 150-ish. I would like to always do double the strike price. And let's say we can get to 700 by January 2026. If we get to $300 by January 2026, a year and eight months from now, it's 2,900% gain. One contract of 12 that's cost $1,200 can give you $37,000, and that's on the last month. What like we've seen, you know, this rally right here from 100 to 300 was only seven months. Right? It's from January 2023 to July of 2023. Seven months. 
to go 3x, right? So 100 to 300. You mean to tell me that if if that can happen, then Tesla can't go to, to 300 one more time, right? Or triple that? You know what I mean? Let's let's get back to this though. Let's say it only does the goes to 300. Is there is there any value here? You know, if, if it only goes to like 300, -ish, you still make a little bit of money, right? If it goes to 400, right? 800 percent, right? Let's say you're not too confident in the next year now. Let's do December, right? Let's do December 2026, and let's do. $300 calls. Now these are $2,300. And let's, I'm going to say that by 2027, which is what that is, December, 2026, 2027, I think Tesla can do $900. Right. But let's say it only goes to 600. You know, you had a three year contract, so to speak, two and a half year contract. If it only goes to 500. You're looking at 700% profit. $2,300 will make you 17 K. And that's if it took all three years. What happens if it goes sooner and you get your money sooner. What happens if it goes to 900, right? By 2027, it's very possible, especially in a healthy market. You're looking at 2,400% on the last month, 2,400%, $56,000 for $2,300 risk or investment. It's not even the risk, right? Because if we start giving this up, you're risking a couple hundred dollars, you know, max $700 to make $56,000. Right? It'll tell you very quickly. We'll know next week if this is the bottom. Your risk and the risk factor here is seven hundred dollars versus fifty six thousand dollars. Right? If you got December two thousand twenty six, three hundred dollar calls. Right? Let's say you want to do January two thousand twenty six and you want to say three hundred dollar calls. And let's say it actually goes to seven hundred by then. If it went to seven hundred dollars by then, you're looking at three thousand percent profit. Seven hundred dollars by January two thousand twenty six. Three thousand percent profit. Is that even worth it? Three thousand percent January. Let's see what that looked like. Seven hundred dollars and then January. Yeah. So seventeen hundred percent versus three thousand. That's what it was, right? Seventeen hundred percent or three thousand percent. You know, I mean, seventeen hundred percent is still good. You get, want to give yourself another year, right? You want to give yourself another year? That's fine, right? But there's so many technicals and components. There's so much line in the sand right here to where it's like if it goes the wrong way, we will know. So you're willing to risk a couple hundred dollars to if you just hodl one of these contracts, you know, you can make thirty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, seventy thousand dollars. But then. What if you get just buy one and it starts going your way and you're like, you know what? Let me go ahead and buy more as I buy up because I also have profit now. That's a probable outcome. So I just wanted to go over this really quick, man. There is, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I already have like twenty thousand dollars worth of contracts, you know. And if I let's see, let's just do the math really quick. And mine are January 2026, but. It's, split between two accounts, but $20,000. And if it was to go to, I'm thinking like 600, right? If it goes to 600 by the last month, I make $500,000 from 20K, right? And me having 20K, I'm willing to risk $3,000 to make $500,000. That's what I'm personally doing right now, right? If I, if, if Tesla starts breaking down next week and it gives up all those levels, then I know it's a failed trade. I'm going to sell. I'm going to lose $3,000. Maybe four thousand, but if I'm not wrong, I stand to make a probable five hundred thousand dollars. I'm taking that trade every time. I'm taking that that trade idea, you know. So something to consider, you know. It's like if we go into this hyper bull market where people think Bitcoin's going to one hundred fifty to two hundred k, what scenario is is the most advanced company not? Doing 300% as well, right? Because you got to realize, $600 is only a, a double from the all-time high, right? The previous all-time high it was what, 
No, it's, it's not even that. It's four hundred dollars. So six hundred dollars is what? Forty-six percent. That's not. That's not as crazy as as you would think, right? It's not. So here's a straight idea. You know, it's going to be crazy. One thirty-eight. Let's see if that's the bottom. You know, all this math is math, and I just showed a lot of math, and I'm a firm believer that everything is algorithm. So let's see what happens. Monday, I'm going to buy the dip if the dip it opens up red. And I will also, if Wednesday after earnings, if Wednesday morning, if it opens up red, I'm going to buy the dip again until we give up 130 and we start pulling away. I'm going to risk $4,000 and make $500,000. That's my risk profile. That's what I'm going to do. So this is a nice little strategy for you guys to think of. It's uh, well thought out. And we have clear land in the sands, you know, risk. You know, if we want to buy one contract, risk a couple hundred dollars to make 20K, 50K. Anyways, cheers.